In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I'm at St. Peter's Cathedral Basilica. Bishop Dabrowski is not present with me, but he extends to you his greetings and is united with us in his prayers. I invite you now to join us for the celebration of the Mass of Chrism. This Mass celebrates the beautiful rituals of the Church in which the oils used for the sacraments are blessed. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being sharers in his consecration we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. You shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people 
whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his name shall be exalted. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him, and my covenant with him will stand firm. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you, and peace from God, who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us, and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests, serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will lament. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Dear brothers and sisters, the Mass of Chrism has always been a highlight for me. The cathedral was full with people from across the diocese representing all our parishes. This year is very different. Our churches are closed because of the coronavirus pandemic. It is very painful for our people not to be able to go to their churches, especially during Holy Week. It's painful for me that I'm celebrating the Mass of Chrism privately in our cathedral. But despite our isolation this year, we are united spiritually by our faith and our prayers. In the rituals of the Mass of Chrism, the bishop blesses the oils to be used during the year for the sacraments. These oils are a sign for us that Jesus continues to pour his spirit out on the church. In this gospel passage that we've just listened to, he speaks to the people of his anointing by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. The Spirit anoints Jesus and sends him out on his mission of announcing the good news through baptism, Jesus anoints us with the Spirit. He sends us out as missionary disciples beyond the doors of our churches to carry on his mission of announcing the good news to the world. Our families of parishes have taken up this call to be missionary church that forms disciples of Jesus. Each of us takes up this mission ourselves when we bear witness to our faith in our everyday lives, when we reach out to others, our families, friends, and acquaintances. In our fight against COVID-19, we need to stay at home and distance ourselves from one another. So we have to find different ways to be missionary disciples and connect with one another. We can call or email someone we know. We can check in on vulnerable or isolated neighbors, offer to help with specific tasks such as shopping or cleaning. We can show compassion for those most at risk, our elderly in our nursing homes, advocating for them and for those who are courageously caring for them. We can make a donation to a charity that is serving the homeless or feeding the hungry. The oils blessed at the Mass of Chrism are a sign of the anointing we receive at baptism, sending us out as missionary disciples. These oils are also a sign of our unity. The Holy Spirit unites us to Jesus in our common mission. And all the baptized are united in this great mission that is what the Mass of Chrism celebrates. Our priests, deacons, and lay ministers are united with their people in this missionary work. Day in and day out, they give of themselves generously to our people. I thank our leaders for their selfless service. Our diocese would be so much poorer without them. During this time of crisis, 
I encourage our pastoral teams to work together, to find new creative ways to be connected to our people, to support them and pray with them. Last year, at the Mass of Chrism, I announced a special year of prayer for our diocese, which began on Pentecost Sunday last June. Throughout this year, our diocese has joined together in prayer. As we strive in our families of parishes to be missionary disciples of Jesus, we do not know exactly what will be demanded of us. I urged all of us to be bold in our faith, to put our trust completely in God's hands, to be confident that the Holy Spirit is with us and will guide our every step on this journey. I think the same is true of this pandemic. Prayer has to be at the heart of all our efforts. We need to listen to Jesus' words to his disciples. Do not be afraid. Put your trust in God. Pastoral teams at this time are reaching out to their parishioners electronically by live streaming their masses, by praying with them, suggesting resources for prayer. I've heard that parents are taking advantage of this time to be with their children, to pray the rosary with them, and to reflect on the scriptures. In the Eucharist, we're united with Jesus on the cross in his great prayer to his Father. In this year of prayer, I invite all in our diocese to join together in prayer. Let us pray with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for those afflicted by the coronavirus. May God pour out his blessings on those who are courageously caring for them, on those who are working on the front lines, and on our leaders. May God give us courage and strength in our fight to stop the, the spread of this virus. Now, I invite all of our people to pray for their priests. And I invite our priests as I, we do the renewal of their priestly promises. I invite our priests to take a moment of quiet prayer, each of them, praying that they will be faithful in living out their priestly commitment and being good shepherds to their people. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. 
Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> the Church's holy oils are composed of pure olive oil. They are symbols of spiritual nourishment used in various instances for ritual anointing. Bishop Fabro, the people of the Diocese of London present to you the oil to be blessed for the oil of the sick. In the name of all those who will receive this anointing, who will be freed from illness and pain, and will be made well again in body, mind and soul, and those who minister to the sick and the dying, we ask you to bless this oil as the oil of the sick. O God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Bishop Fabro, the people of the Diocese of London, present to you the oil to be blessed for the oil of the catechumen. In the name of all the infants and elect of our diocese, who awaits the waters of rebirth through baptism, who will be anointed with this oil as a source of Christ's strengthening through the period of the catechumenate. We ask you to bless this oil as the oil of the catechumen. O God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, that they may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew 
and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. We, the people of the Diocese of London, present to you the oil to be consecrated for the sacred chrism. With this sacred oil, those who will be baptized and confirmed will share in the mission of Christ, the Anointed One. The mixture of oil and fragrant perfume will anoint the confirmandi, the presbyter's hands, and the bishop's head, and the altar and walls of the house of the church. In the name of the people of our diocese who will be anointed with this oil, we ask you to consecrate this oil as the oil of chrism. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil. May those who are signed with it outwardly be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism, in the spirit of prophecy, 
David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been cleared, clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil makes our faces cheerful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son. And you were seen to confirm clearly that the prophet David had foretold in song that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, O Lord, be pleased to sanctify your blessing with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, he, he, it has received the name of Christ, Chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the Chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life, for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, who to the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your, your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and Joseph, my auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.